Welcome back to another episode of the Max Bloom vs. the High Bay LED Lights. This is Season 2, Episode 4. And in this episode, I just want to kind of go over uh, some of the growth that's been going on and some of the changes and how I change the nutrients. Uh, so by the time you guys see this episode, the actual experiment will probably be over. And I've already done it uh, the next video after this. So the plan is to release this video and then the following week will be the last video. So there will be a big difference between this one and the next one in a short time, as you'll see it. But in fact, uh, quite a bit of time has actually passed since between the two makings of the videos. So anyways, um, in order to show the differences between these plants here, I'm gonna shut the lights off. Now we can see it clear, clearly with the same light, the color differences and the way the plants are looking. So if you look on the left side under the Max Bloom, the plant closest to me has very nice looking normal leaves. And the plant on the right side under the High Bay in the back corner over there, that one also has very nice normal looking leaves. And the only difference you can see pretty much is that the one of the Max Bloom just is slightly darker green. And that's pretty typical when you're growing under a blurple light. Um, that's just excess chlorophyll production. It doesn't really necessarily mean the plant is any healthier. It's just, it's just overproducing chlorophyll because it's kind of what plants do when they respond to a very low amount of light. Uh, so if you like, in a, the best example you come up with is if you have a plant in the shade, the leaves will, in, in some species, will be darker green than if they were in the sun. That's because they're producing more chlorophyll so they can absorb the most amount of light. And that's usually what happens when you're growing under a blurple light because uh, it's not getting a full spectrum. It's not getting all the wavelengths that it possibly needs. So it kind of sees it, it kind of thinks it's in the shade in a sense. But there's a lot more to it and I'm all, that's really the only thing I'm gonna say about it. But anyways, if you look at the plant under the Max Bloom on the back side there, that one plant back there, you can see the leaves don't look quite as good. I get a little closer. They, it didn't really grow any new leaves. I'm going to get into that in a second here, but you can see that the leaves are kind of crinkly looking and they're smaller compared to this plant in the front. These look how they're supposed to look. Same thing over here on the high base side. Nice leaves. And then you got here these crinkly, smaller looking leaves. Now, I'm not entirely sure exactly how this happened or why this happened. Um, I didn't do anything. I, I, was either, I was thinking that it could have been a disease or it just could be stress. I'm not entirely sure, but it looks to me like it's uh, a calcium uptake, a calcium deficiency, possibly nitrogen too, because it didn't grow anymore, uh, which is what I was gonna talk about here. What I did here is I've actually added, um, not, I'm sorry, not added. I actually changed, when I changed the solution last, which was about a week ago, uh, I switched it over to the Transition, transition to bloom phase, the, that particular mixture, which is instead of one, table, one teaspoon per gallon, it's two teaspoons per gallon of each type uh, flora series. So about a week ago, I sucked out all the solution and then added that, about four gallons worth. And since then, uh, this new growth here, the, all these plants actually looked kind of the same. So like the, the plant back there in the backside uh, looked very similar to the plant in the front. Uh, it didn't have these nice new leaves, but since I changed the solution out, it grew all these nice new leaves while that one didn't. Uh, it was the same thing over here, except this plant over here, the one in the back already kind of looked better and it was already bigger and taller than this one. Uh, but the one in the back actually just grew uh, some more leaves, but they were not the same height to begin with. So you can see the difference in height here. Quite a big, quite a big difference in height. That was already like that before I changed the nutrient solution to to the uh, uh, other mix. On this side, though, the plants were about the same height, and this one here just grew some new leaves, which made it look just a little bit taller than the one in the back. And you can see those are both about the same height. But if you look, I mean, it's the same. We're seeing the same kind of consistency. Uh, the plants under the high bay have been, the whole time, been just been bigger, been larger than the plants under the Max Bloom. And it's basically a mirror image. You've got one plant back there that looks identical to the plant up here, and one plant in the front here that's 
looks identical to the planet back there, but one is just bigger than the other. And that's the same trend I've been seeing the whole time. There are, there is fruit growing here, you can see. We got some peppers. Not a heck of a lot, but there's just starting. And then we got some over here on the high base eye, which there's actually, I think these are actually, there's actually a little more, I believe, on this side, and they're maybe a little bit bigger. Um, over on this side, we don't have quite as many, at least doesn't look like it. And I'm, I'm not really counting them yet. I'm not gonna end the experiment until I get uh, more growth on the top part of the canopy. So let me go ahead and turn the lights back on. So now we got the lights back on. Um, I just wanted to free up one hand. <laughs> so when these flowers on the top, these here, when these start to pollinate and produce peppers and they grow to a pickable size, uh, once they have all done that, for the most part, that's when I'm gonna end the experiment. Um, and every day I come down here and I just go like this with the plant. I just kind of tap it like this, all of them. And that is what pollinates the flowers. And I continually do that because every day you can have a new flower that opens up. I just wanna make sure I get um, as many pollinated as I can. That plant back there, I'm telling you right now, is gonna produce the most fruit out of all of them, out of the rest of the whole three. That's my initial guess, just because it's larger. We'll see though. As far as the roots go, you know, I was thinking, well, maybe if this plant is smaller, you'd see difference in the roots, just like the one on this side in the back. All of these roots look identical. I cannot tell the difference between any of these root bundles. They all look the same. So there's no root rot going on. Uh, there's no color differences. They're all the same. So who knows if it's a disease or if it's just stressed or what. It might start to bounce back in the next uh, couple weeks here. Uh, you won't really see that because, like I said, the following week after you see this video should be the last video and some time has passed since then. That's just the way I'm uploading these videos. Um, so anyways, kind of a longer video this time. I just wanted to cover a couple things. And I have been making sure the PAR has been saying that the same of the plant canopies as much as I can. It's kind of difficult on this side since we got two different plant heights compared to the, compared to the high bay. So it's, it's basically impossible to try to get this plant here to be the same height as that plant. Uh, so all I'm really doing right now is kind of sorting, sort of splitting the difference and I've actually moved the bin just enough so that we're getting a little bit more light on the front side rather than the back side and that kind of makes it more even as, as much as possible. That's basically the inverse square wall happening there. Um, this one over here is a little different because the light is a different shape and it, I took the lenses off, obviously, because they're, you know, that's the whole point of doing this test with the pepper plants and everything is part of the season. Uh, this is a little bit easier because both these plants here on this side are about the same height. But even with the, the view, even with the lenses off, the light output underneath this light still is not very even. Uh, I can move in different spots and there's a pretty drastic change, you know, of like 50 or so micromole just by moving in, a, in the same plane. Uh, very difficult to try to make it perfect. It's just not possible. Uh, these both the sides are very close though. On average, they're very, very close. Over here on this side, it is more even. Um, if you were to measure par from this light, because it's very diffused and it's a circle, uh, it's just very, very even for the most part compared to the max plum. That's the only thing I will say about as far as how the light output goes on between these lights. Again, I'm not suggesting anyone buy either one of these lights. We're just doing this experiment just because we're doing this for the sake of doing the experiment, just to see what happens. I don't recommend buying the Maxum, and I don't recommend buying this high bay light either. Although they are the same price, uh, there are way better choices these days of these quantum grow light panels, uh, just like the Mars Hydro I did a re review on, which I'm currently doing another test with, uh, which you will see probably in the coming months maybe in January, I'm guessing. So that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.